Targeted therapy can make all the difference in the fight against lung cancer. And that's why knowing your biomarker is so critical for people living with lung cancer. Hi there, I'm Diane Mulligan. And I'm Jordan Sherman. Among the many biomarkers is a recent discovery, MTAP deletion. And there's a clinical trial looking at a new therapy to treat that particular biomarker. Today, we're talking to the medical oncologist who's been working in the drug development area for more than 10 years. Because it has been only recently recognized its importance. It is only recently that we are testing for, for this genetic alteration, and now we are developing drugs to target that, uh, that alteration. Lung cancer is a tough topic. It's a disease that affects patients, families, friends, co-workers. But first, it's a disease that affects people. The Hope With Answers Living With Lung Cancer podcast brings you stories about people living, truly living with lung cancer. The researchers dedicated to finding new breakthrough treatments and others who are working to bring hope into the lung cancer experience. We're joined today by Dr. Jordi Radon with the Department of Investigational Cancer Therapeutics Division of Cancer Medicine at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. Dr. Radon specializes in early drug development, biomarker discovery, personalized cancer medicine, and neuro-oncology. Dr. Radon, it is great to talk to you today. Thank you so much. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. I'm a medical oncologist and I work at MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston. And um, I've been working in drug development for more than 10 years. Um, my area of interest is developing new drugs in uh, specifically genetic uh, selected patient populations. Dr. Rodon, you are one of the principal investigators on a clinical trial looking at a new therapy to treat a type of biomarker called MTAP deletion. Could you explain a little bit more about what it is and why it's so important for lung cancer patients to know about it? So I'm very excited with this new field. This is not a new kit on the block. We knew about MTAP loss for many years and it's present in many uh, tumor types. But what is new is the an understanding of the role of this gene in, in lung cancer uh, and other tumors, but uh, we're talking about lung cancer today. So. This genetic alteration, it was thought that it was just a collateral damage that happened in tumors, but we have learned more and more that it actually plays a role. Uh, there are some advantages for the tumor to have uh, this gene lost. And then uh, at the same time, uh, there is new medications that can use that as a vulnerability for the tumor, like the drugs that we are exploring uh, nowadays in the clinic. So that opens a new, uh, weak point for the tumor to be targeted. We love that. The whole idea of targeting the tumors is so exciting. Um, do I understand correctly that the MTAP deletion is a genetic alteration um, in uh, lung cancer that's independent of other established biomarkers and that you now have this new approach in treating these tumors with this genetic alteration? Correct, yes. Uh, so it's important to understand that this is not exclusive with a, a more established uh, genetic alteration. So we can see MTAP loss in patients with EGFR mutation or KRAS mutations, or in those that the, the, these genes are wild type. Um, it, is, um, it is an independent one. So now, because it has been only recently recognized its importance, it is only recently that we are testing for, for this genetic alteration, and now we are developing drugs to target that, uh, that alteration. Dr. Rodan, if, if you have a liquid biopsy, is this type of screening on that panel? So liquid biopsies uh, are transformative, uh, but the technology is not yet there to detect copy number loss. So um, you can see mute specific mutations. You can occasionally see excess of copies of a gene. But right now, the technology is not good enough to detect copy number loss, which is what we are looking like. The, the region of the chromosome is missing. That is because it gets diluted with all the normal DNA that we find in, a, in blood normally. So the technology is not right there. So the liquid biopsies may not be able, may, may 
immense majority of, of tests that I know, um, they are trying hard to improve the technology, but we are not there yet. So if you're a patient who had a liquid biopsy <laughs> for biomarker testing, is this a scenario where they should talk to their doctor about additional biomarker testing so that they could then be screened for the MTAP deletion? Yeah, unfortunately, nowadays, we would still need some tissue analysis. Now, the good thing is that uh, you could do, you could repeat a genetic test that includes this region of the genome, um, or there are immunosochemistry assays. So the, the gene produces a protein called also MTAP, and you can do a simple immunosochemistry to see the expression of this protein and correlates really well with the genetic loss. So in those patients who have very small uh, biopsies that maybe you, you won't be able to do a genetic test. And that's some of the occasions we do liquid biopsies because we don't have enough tissue. A simple immunochemistry doesn't use that much tissue. So that would be a, a good option. But you need a tissue test, either genetic or immunochemistry, to detect these alterations. You won't be able to use liquid biopsy. Interesting. Okay. So I understand you're part of the clinical trial to learn more about the MTAP deletion. What type of lung cancer patients would qualify for this trial? So this, this alteration is present in 10, 15% of non-small cell lung cancer patients. Uh, this is a, a theme for, for lung disease. That's the most important. I want to, maybe in the audience are, is also interested, mesothelioma, another thoracic uh, cancer, is also very frequently, has this genetic alteration also very frequently. I'm not aware of small cell lung cancer, so I would focus on non-small cell lung cancer and mesothelioma for, for testing for this genetic alteration. And it's going to be 10, 15% of, 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 the, of the patient. So where are the uh, clinical trials happening um, for this particular uh, MTAP deletion? So there were a first generation of trials uh, with, uh, with all drugs, and now there is a second generation of medications that look really promising. I know at least three. Uh, but because these are early days for these medications, these, are, these trials are in big academic centers where they are specialized in all the complexities of new medications. Uh, so to ensure safety, uh, these, uh, these trials that need uh, highly dedicated uh, uh, centers with very specialized. So I would say uh, that in cancer centers, uh, in, uh, in, but this is all, there are three trials. So it, it's the, the whole geography of the, of the US uh, have, have sites uh, for these trials. And how long do you think um, uh, enrollment will be ongoing for patients? <laughs> That's a good question. So 10, 15% of lung cancer patients, uh, phalangeo, uh, is, a, is a significant number of patients. Mm -hmm. Now, the issue is that most of the genetic tests do not capture this. So the studies are moving slowly because we can only use the last generation of genetic tests. Um, so it seems that it's going to take at least one or two years uh, to finalize these studies and move on to more dedicated uh, trials, like in, in long, specialized in lung cancer. But the trials are right now available for uh, all, all patients with, uh, with this genetic alteration. So I think at least for uh, two, two more years, uh, it will be probably available. That's great to know. Uh, so Dr. Rodon, um, let's talk more about the biomarker testing. What makes NTAP, MTAP deletion so unique? Well, in a way, it's, uh, it's this, the new science that uh, has emerged about uh, the role of this gene. Um, we, it touches on um, immune resistance. Uh, it touches also on the metabolism of the tumor. And it also is related with, um, um, with now, because of these metabolic vulnerabilities, we know that some chemos would be more efficacious in this genetic test, in this genetic alteration. And this new medic generation of drugs, specifically target MTAP, could also be a great therapeutic tool. Uh, so there are so many points of view, so many ways of using this. So in the next years, I think research is going to bloom in this field of targeting MTAP, using it as a prognostic factor, using it as a predictive factor of chemo, also as a selection uh, marker for this uh, new uh, generation of drugs. So it has many different layers, So that's, and that's what it makes it very, very interesting, interaction with 
checkpoint inhibitors that are very popular and very very efficacious. So it is it is a lot of a lot of work to do. Well, I think too, and and part of that is going to be testing for MTAP deletion. So you know, for um, patients who have had biomarker testing before, should they be asking about their uh, about additional screening for MTAP deletion? Yes. So yes, there is a huge array of different tests, uh, mm -hmm. different uh, commercial vendors. There is uh, cancer centers uh, offering genetic tests. I would say that it's only in the last two years that some of the genetic tests have been updated, upgraded to include this gene. So if the genetic test is uh, limited in the number of genes that has been tested or is older than two years, MTAD may not have been included. So if you don't look, you don't see. Um, so um, it may not be, it may not be, have been tested. So in those cases, I think it would be good to retest either with a more modern genetic testing or with the immunosochemistry that I was mentioning before. But it has only been very recent tests um, that have included that. That's great information. Jordan, that was a fantastic discussion with Dr. Rodon. Thank you so much to him for joining us and for giving us all that wonderful information. And if you're enjoying the Hope and the Answers Living with Lung Cancer podcast, consider making a donation to help LCFA produce this resource for patients or anyone seeking answers, hope, and access to updated treatment information, scientific investigation, and clinical trials. All you have to do is text LCFA to 41444 to join this important fight. Make sure to subscribe to the Hope with Answers Living with Lung Cancer podcast. You'll be notified every time a new episode is available. So visit us online at lcfamerica.org where you can find more information about the latest in lung cancer research, new treatments, and more. You can also join the conversation with LCFA on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.